Hello, I'm Scruffy, and today, I'll be talking a short while about a short hike. When I first tried out this little indie game by Adam Robinson Yu, and every subsequent time I hopped in, I felt absolutely immersed in this charming world. The goal, on the surface, is simply to get this protagonist, a bird named Claire, to the peak of the island mountain, Hawk Peak. But surrounding that goal is a whole island to explore, filled with plenty of small animal characters to talk to, treasure to seek, and views to take in, powered by a remarkably unique pixelated 3D rendering style. But what glues the whole experience together is the brilliant, warm soundtrack by Mark Sparling, and that's where I begin this short hike to show you how the adaptive soundtrack helps you explore the game's island and even find your bearings. But I'm not going it alone. I'm grateful to have the composer himself here with me, Mark Sparling. So, Mark, thank you for being here with me. Hey, Scruffy. Thanks for having me. Let's start with a little background on the soundtrack. What influenced its style? This comfy spot between acoustic bluegrass instruments, fun percussion, and even the occasional synthesizer. I'm a big fan of Studio Ghibli and Joe Hisaishi, and so the main melody to a short hike was definitely like a what if Joe wrote this type thing. I don't know if I'll ever reach the level of mastery and musicality that Joe has, but in trying to emulate his style, I felt like I found a solid theme that I could work with. There were also a couple of other influences that I consciously tried to bring into the music when writing. A bunch of these were also brought up by Adam, the game's creator. One of them was Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing just does sparse, ambient music so well. There isn't anything specific that I can point to in the soundtrack and say, this is from Animal Crossing. But I was listening to the New Leaf soundtrack pretty much every day while writing. Another influence was Carrie and Lowell by Sufjan Stevens. Sufjan has these beautiful layered arpeggiated lines that I wanted to try and replicate somehow. So that's where a lot of the guitar, mandolin, and banjo arranging ideas come from. The arrangements and the sparseness in Carrie and Lowell are just incredible. I also love Firewatch's approach to his music. It's so sparse, yet evocative. I definitely feel like my stuff is a lot busier than Firewatch, but a bunch of the less melodic layers are me trying and failing to get that more ambient, moody sound. Yeah. Well, that's a wonderful host of influences to draw from. And I do hear the sparseness in this soundtrack. It's easy to listen to while playing. But at other times, I hear clear melodies and more active parts in the music, and that's dependent on what's going on in-game. So let's talk about how this soundtrack is also adaptive. You mentioned that some layers are more melodic than others. How did that decision come about, and how does it work? Adam was concerned that something too memorable would quickly grow tedious, since this game is all about exploration, and you'll likely be in one of the three main areas for the majority of your time in the game. And he was 100% right on this. But... I am very much a memorable melody type of composer, so writing something more ambient like this was really tough. But all that being said, I am extremely happy with the end result, which was an adaptive system that uses memorable melodies to highlight certain areas and uses more ambient layers for the other areas. Each area is split up into different sub areas. So in the first game area, you have the bay, the campground, and the western shoreline. All of these areas share a percussion layer, layer one, that hopefully gives them a sense of connectivity. The bay is a focal point that I wanted to highlight with a slightly more memorable and active melody, layer two. So it has its own melody layer, but its background chord layer, layer three, is shared with the campground. The campground has a slightly less active melody, layer four, and then the campground melody also carries over to the western shoreline, but there is a different accompaniment, layer five. And then there's also a layer that comes in when you're flying that's very influenced by Steve Reich's music for 18 musicians. Each area works like this, with the exception of the peak and the boat. The peak basically just stacks layers one on top of the other to build tension, so it hopefully gets more exciting as you climb. The boat music works pretty much the same way, whereas you speed up, more layers come in until you're at maximum speed. Gotcha. Well, thank you for explaining those systems, Mark. Not only do they prevent the memorable parts of the music from becoming tedious, they also have some really cool impacts on the narrative of a short hike and the way the player is guided through it. Like, it makes sense that more musical layers fade in as you speed up the boat. It's encouraging you to go faster and explore more of this ocean. 
It makes sense that more musical layers stack up as you ascend the peak of the mountain. They're building more and more anticipation for seeing that summit. But when you split the whole base of the island into several musical-themed areas, and then further split each area into different sub-areas with different mixes of the same theme, you're creating an auditory map of sorts. You don't get an actual visual map of the island in the game. The most you'll get are signs pointing to different paths, or some helpful landmarks, or the occasional buried treasure riddle. So, while you get your bearings and try to remember where you've been, you can start to make note of how the music will experience big or small changes distinctly when you reach certain passages or waypoints. And while this doesn't become a perfect map in your head... Uh, here, let me share a story about it. So, the first time I played a short hike, I knew the peak was the end goal, so I wanted to see all I could of the island first. And that started with walking around the whole perimeter, seeing all the different beaches and how the weather changed as you did that. I had gone through three different music tracks with layered variations of each of those, and then a fourth area where there was no music and it was raining. But once I made it out of the rain, eventually I started to hear the first area's music again, even though the terrain was unfamiliar, and I thought, wait, I recognize that. Have I made it back to where I started? And sure enough, by gliding from a vantage point and swimming through the ocean a bit, I came ashore where the game had begun, with this little cabin and Claire's Aunt May relaxing beside it. And I know that means I just made it around the island once, but the magical part for me was hearing that first, before I saw it. And from then on, I knew that I could divide things up by music, or lack thereof. Suddenly the island didn't seem so daunting without a map. And that's what I find really neat about this adaptive soundtrack. Not only is it cozy in the way Studio Ghibli or Animal Crossing is cozy, but it's tied to location, and its layering makes the task of mentally mapping locations dynamic and memorable, and fun. And definitely that means I recommend A Short Hike to anyone who hasn't played it. It's on Steam and Nintendo Switch, and to people who have played it, why not try it again? I know I can't help but study the music in these games, but I really encourage a close listen to how the music changes as you play. And I recommend checking out Mark Sparling's work. I've linked some ways you can do that in this video's description. Thanks again so much, Mark, for contributing your thoughts and input on your charming soundtrack to this game. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon, who help make my videos a more sustainable process. If you'd like to support my work directly and get perks like your credit here, seeing videos early, a vote on what music I arrange, and more behind-the-scenes content, you can visit my Patreon link, also in this video's description. And with that, I'm Scruffy, and thank you very much for watching.